Biology is the only subject where multiplication is the same as division. Stay tuned to discover this fascinating field one video at a time. Since I first started talking about the science behind sequencing companies, there have been a number of new developments. Let me talk about the first piece of news before I tell you why I was wrong about Illumina. A few videos back, I was talking about a third generation sequencing company, Oxford Nanopore, which is making a splash in the sequencing pool. They are directly competing with Pacific Biosciences because both are considered third generation. And this company has a significant advantage over the other. Oxford Nanopore announced that they are going to file for an IPO on the London Stock Exchange. This will give retail investors access into the company for the first time. Let me know in the comments section below if you'd like me to compare it to Pacific Biosciences. So the next question is, will they threaten Illumina? Personally, I feel they are of immediate threat to Pacific Biosciences because the third generation sequencing aces in long reads. If I were in a lab and I want to do long reads, then I have to choose between the two of them. If cost were a concern, then I'll scrap everything and go with Illumina, especially when the company have publicly committed to reduce the cost by 40% by 2025. So as an Illumina shareholder, I'm not that worried. Do you just do a double take? Yes, I said it. At the time of making this video, I just bought three shares of Illumina at $395.50. When I first started talking about Illumina, I was unimpressed even though they have the dominant market share in sequencing. However, looking at their technology being used elsewhere is making me crazy excited! Where is it, you might ask? First in cancer screening company Grail, and then in gene expression company 10x Genomics, which is an ArcG favourite. I'll talk about Grail in this episode and 10x Genomics the next. Grail is a company that originally spun out of Illumina focused on cancer screening using the concept of cell-free DNA. Cell-free DNA is a heterogeneous type of DNA that's ejected from cells. This is unnatural as DNA is the molecule that holds the genetic information and should be kept inside a nucleus in a cell. There are situations in which DNA becomes cell-free and the most important of which is necrosis. This occurs when the cell undergoes tremendous stress. For example, when infected with viruses, poisoned with chemicals, and most importantly, triggered by cancer mutations. Do click on the I button appearing above right now if you want a quick refresh of cancer before we proceed. So as a result of the stressful events, the cell literally explodes, releasing its contents. White blood cells called macrophages act like cleanup crew to remove all the remnants. But some of the cellular contents flow past these cells, ending up in the blood circulation and these contents frequently comprise of DNA and hence the name cell-free DNA. Let's connect the concept of cancer to cell-free DNA. Cancer is mainly a result of random mutations that occur by chance involving cancer-related genes. This can involve small and or large mutations and even epigenetic changes without any mutations. As it accumulates, it transforms a normal cell into a cancer cell. It is said that anywhere between 3 to 7 of such changes accumulate on cancer-related genes before the transformation occurs. However, we will assume that there will typically be more than 3 to 7 actual genetic changes in reality. This is considering that some of the genetic changes do not affect the cancer-related genes. In fact, when some of the other non-cancer-related genes that are crucial to the cell survival undergoes genetic changes, this may result in necrosis and hence creating cell-free DNA. I mentioned that cancer is a heterogeneous disease where a lump of tissue can be constituted by individual cells that have very different genetic changes. Imagine that there is a group of cells early in the cancer transformation, perhaps with only one or two of those genetic changes, but an accidental mutation occurs on a crucial gene which results in one of those cells undergoing necrosis, releasing this cell-free DNA. And Grail comes to the rescue by sampling the blood to detect the presence of such DNA, allowing the physician to identify the potential precancerous lesions before the normal cells undergo a full transformation into cancer and spread, so that surgical excision or other therapies can be instituted as early as possible, preventing and avoiding the suffering of this disease. And that, my friend, is revolutionary cancer screening. Why is it revolutionary? Typically, the detection of cancer arises when a patient complains about feeling unwell, and when they do, in many situations, the normal to cancer cell transformation has already occurred, and in some cases, even spread. 
Cancer diagnoses using tools such as those proposed by BioNanogenomics are only confirming what's already present at one particular anatomical site. As biopsies are taken from a suspected anatomical location, this does not take into consideration that the cancer may have already spread and other insidious lesions may be developing. In contrast, GRAIL provides a blood test known as Gallery that can be used to detect early stages prior to cancer transformation. Not only that, the company mentioned that it can be used to detect more than 50 different cancers. Holy GRAIL! And I'm not done! GRAIL's Gallery test will help to isolate out the cell-free DNA to be tested. The results are analysed and mapped back to the patients so that clinical investigations can be initiated. Once the status is confirmed, the data will be fed into the company's machine learning neural network. In this way, particular hotspots of certain cancers of certain organs can be identified and become a signature indicative of disease. The more data there is, the more accurate this will get. And on that note, there are already four clinical trials currently ongoing managed by GRAIL. The SUMMIT study is on course to enrol 25,000 individuals in the UK for early multiple cancer detection with a focus on heavy smokers. The Pathfinder study has enrolled 6,200 individuals who are doing parallel routine health checks. The CCGA study enrolled 15,000 participants across US and Canada with a focus on long-term observation of the gallery results and outcome. The last and the biggest of which is Strive, which enrolled 100,000 women, oh my, at the time of their routine mammogram screening. Are you seeing the excitement on my face right now? The next question is, what has Illumina got to do with Grail? Once the cell-free DNA has been extracted from the patient's blood, guess what technology is used to identify the mutations? Illumina sequencing technology! Grail is tied to Illumina at birth, so it is only natural to send all the sequencing that way. Not only that, Illumina costs are the most competitive right now for large-scale studies. And the sequencing that is done involves the shorter stretches of cell-free DNA which Illumina is famed for. Not only that, Illumina has reiterated they are going to reduce the cost by at least 40% by 2025. There's nobody right now that can produce this kind of cost advantage. In addition, there are two other companies that's in a race to do what Grail does. One is Thrive, which is acquired by Exact Sciences, which actually has a position in, and the other being Singlera Genomics. Guess where they're going to send their samples to when they need short read sequencing done? And this will increase the dominance of Illumina as the use case expands. And the good thing is, they already have the lion's share of the bread and butter sequencing. Giving away the machines for free to chase market share is really damaging to the bottom line, as in the case of BioNano Genomics. Not only that, customers at the receiving end of such machines are typically not as sticky, and they will leave for the next hype option when they come along. But of course, we have to discuss the big news that FTC is blocking Illumina from purchasing Grail outright. I'm not too worried since Illumina is the larger shareholder of Grail at 14.5%. So if Grail does well in the future, Illumina will benefit from it too. Not only that, there's also Thrive and Singlera Genomics. Where is the monopoly? Of course, if the deal managed to close successfully, this will guarantee explosive future growth, especially if it means a single blood draw is going to wipe cancer out of your existence. For the watch till the end gang, I would like to once again acknowledge Duncan and Andre for bringing my attention to Grail. As to my newly acquired Illumina positions, I'm going to hold on to them for the long term. Even though I've entered late to the game after the meteoric rise of 2020, the recent correction gave me a small window of opportunity to scoop some up. If it continues to fall further, I'll continue to add to my position just like Beam Therapeutics. If there are any changes to the scientific fundamentals of these companies, I'll definitely let you know. In the meantime, if you'd like to know more about Beam Therapeutics or Refresher, you can click right on.